One of the most important goals of a viticulturist is to create vines with a balance between the vegetative growth, shoots and leaves, and the reproductive growth of the vine, grape clusters, in order to achieve the quality yield and maturity desired. Vines with low vegetative vigor could struggle to ripen fruit. Conversely, vines with excessive vigor shade clusters and continue to focus on vegetative growth to the detriment of ripening fruit. Berry development occurs in two phases. After flowering and berry set, the first phase is a period of rapid growth characterized primarily by cell division that is critical in determining final berry size. This is followed by a lag phase with little growth. And then, beginning at verasion, there is a second phase of berry growth characterized by cellular expansion. During the lag phase of growth, a viticulturist should get an estimate of the final crop size and decide if crop thinning is necessary to achieve the desired balance and yield. At lag phase, grape clusters are approximately half their final weight. So by counting a subset of clusters per vine and weighing a portion of the clusters, you can estimate the final yield. Once you have a crop estimate and have decided how much you would like to reduce the crop, you can develop a protocol that is clear for vineyard workers to follow. There is a general correlation between lower yields and higher quality. However, too much thinning is wasteful and can be detrimental to wine quality if sugar accumulation outpaces other parameters of fruit maturation in a small crop. One standard protocol that the industry commonly uses is to thin the crop based on shoot length. Although vine resources can move through the vine from shoot to shoot, this type of protocol is still useful as a simple method for reducing crop on vines with weak shoots, which is a good indicator that they won't be able to ripen a large crop. For example, you may choose to remove all fruit from shoots less than 18 inches long and leave only one cluster on shoots between 18 and 24 inches. Shoots longer than 24 inches can retain two clusters. These length parameters can change depending on how much fruit you want to remove. With young or weak vines, you can choose to thin to one cluster per shoot. This is occasionally done in very high quality farming where the winemaker wants low yields and it's an easy parameter for workers to follow. Short shoots would still have all fruit removed. Another protocol is to remove a certain amount of clusters per vine. For example, let's say your average cluster count is 20 clusters per vine and you are estimating that that will yield four tons per acre based on lag phase cluster weights. If your target yield is three tons per acre, you can choose to remove five clusters per vine. However, counting clusters on every vine is time consuming, and it is also important that the workers are trained to focus on spreading out the thinning across the entire vine, particularly focusing on removing clusters from crowded areas or lower vigor shoots. In cordon trained spur prune vines, a similar protocol is to leave three clusters per position. In a fruitful year, most shoots will have at least two clusters and a spur position with two shoots would therefore have four clusters. By reducing this to three, you will reduce the crop by approximately 25% and reduce congestion. With all protocols, be sure to have a good idea of the actual average number of clusters per position or per vine and what percent reduction you will therefore achieve before implementing protocols like these. In some cases, the crop that's set may be in balance with the vegetative growth and you may simply want to position fruit so it is all hanging freely. This may require the occasional removal of a cluster or the wing of a cluster in a crowded area. Cluster shaping should be considered in very high quality farming situations. If you keep a close eye, wings or tips of clusters may develop at a different rate than the majority of the cluster, and removing these parts of the cluster can enhance uniformity and accelerate ripening of the remaining fruit. A second thinning pass is often suggested during verasion. This can enhance uniformity and accelerate ripening and is an easy protocol to implement, especially in red grape varieties where color is a good indicator. For example, thinning the 5% of clusters lagging in development, those that still have a high percentage of green berries at 95% verasion is an easy protocol. For those wanting a larger adjustment, the protocol can be to thin the lagging fruit earlier, say at 80% verasion. However, it is more advantageous to make larger crop adjustments at lag phase. The later you thin, the less impact you will have in terms of reallocating vine resources to enhance uniformity and accelerate ripening in the remaining fruit. By thinning early, you can conceivably thin less. However, thinning too early is not a good idea, so unless the vineyard is extremely weak or young, you shouldn't really thin fruit until you've reached lag phase and berries have completed their first phase of berry growth that is critical in determining final berry size. 
Thinning before lag phase can cause the vine's resources to oversize the remaining berries. So using the extra crop as a sink during the first phase of berry growth can be beneficial in keeping berry size small for high quality vineyards. As with many vineyard practices, crop thinning is an art and a science, a combination of intuition and experience. Vine balance can be subjective to a degree, so keep in mind quality and economic goals when making your thinning protocol.